With that being said, Teddy, let's talk about the main event. This is probably the least I've ever looked forward to discussing a fight in my life. Very painful to see Dustin lose here in the championship fight. Dustin Poirier gets submitted rear naked choke to Charles Oliveira that continues to look unbelievable from where he was earlier in his career. His development has been incredible. I think he surprised a lot of people with his... Um, with his skills in this fight against Dustin. Um, you know, I heard Dustin say I was just texting back and forth with him uh, this morning, and he's, you know, obviously he's very disappointed, but he's, he's, a, he's, he, he's a champion for a He's got a champion mindset for a reason. He's, he knows it's a bump in the road, and he's got, you know, pick the pieces up. But, um, you know, in the first round, in between first and second, he thought, um, this is it. I'm about to be the world champion. He was boxing beautifully. It was literally like Charles had no answer for the straight lefts that Charles that um, that uh, Dustin was throwing right down the middle. He was connecting almost on every single one of them. And I think Oliveira realizing that said, "Okay, I am not going to win a fight in this in this to use your terminology in this geography. This fight for me to win has to be on the canvas." He got him down there, and uh, to Oliveira's credit. He controlled him there. He 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 got him in uh, on the ground early into the second round, and Dustin, you know, after the fight, said, "Look, there was nothing I could really do." I, he, Dustin had him in the full guard. Dustin said he didn't want to try to like hip escape or scoot back towards the fence where he might be able to get out of that position. He was content to just hold on and try to get out of the round because he was afraid that with Charles. J BJJ skills, that if he tried to hip escape or tried to like sweep. Oliveira off him. He was afraid of giving up his back. He knew he was vulnerable in that position with a jiu-jitsu player like Charles. So he was content to ride the round out and almost give the round away, essentially, and try to prevent Charles from doing too much damage. He did exactly that. Took some big shots and elbows from the uh, from Charles, who, who obviously had the top position on him. Unfortunately for Dustin, Charles did get his back standing up. Uh, Dustin, in hindsight, said he thought that Charles was a little too high with the um, with the hooks in on his back from the standing position, but that's why Charles is the champion. He said he was so he he was so strong on my back, and then he eventually worked his way into that um, rear naked choke. And Dustin said, "Look, I did everything I could, and you, you know, from having from all of us having seen Dustin been in been in vulnerable positions before, you know, he's not going to tap unless it's." It's all it's it's over. And uh, Charles Oliveira gets the win by rear naked choke. Congratulations to Charles. Very sorry to see Dustin um, lose the opportunity to be the champion. But we know he'll be back if that's what he decides to do. The guy is a world class human being. It's very, very heartbreaking to see him lose. We know what he's been through to get to this point. I was telling you, Teddy, via text. Man, this is one of the hardest things about being involved in combat sports, boxing, or UFC is seeing someone that you genuinely care about come out on the wrong end of a uh, of a fight. It's 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 very hard to watch, and um, you know I hope Dustin's all right emotionally. I know he's okay physically, but uh, yeah, that was a tough one. Curious to hear what your thoughts were on the uh, technical on the technical side. Well, of things. you can't go just technical because. The championship makes somebody 30% better. The old timers always told me that. And you're right. And they're right. And there's a reason why they told me that. It makes you 30% better mentally in a business that's 75% mental. See, we got to start with that before we go into the technical stuff because that's where this was. Because there were times where Oliveira wasn't always as appearing to be as determined as. A Dustin Poirier. There were times where Oliveira, put it this way, he always fought like a champion, good enough to be a champion, but he didn't always behave good enough to be a champion, and he behaved good enough to be a champion now. And and that comes partly with the 30% getting better with winning a world title, where you now believe in yourself more you now you now know your champion so you now know that you have to behave like one not fight you you already knew how to fight like one how the hell you think you got there you already knew how to do that but now you know how to behave like one now 
You understand the cement that keeps the bricks. You always had the bricks of talent. But now you got the cement that keeps those bricks in place even when somebody steps on them and somebody jumps on them and somebody, you know, stamps on them. They don't move because the belief, because the mental part, that 30% difference of you have something to defend now. Something that is something that you must defend. That you're called a champion. Well, I better freaking behave like one. Like you automatically, like you, you just, it's like you change when you're a father. You know that. You had the blessing of being a father. I had the blessing of being a grandfather too. But you, be, you become more mature. You become less selfish. You do. You become stronger as a person. Because now you have strength towards somebody else. Not just you. You have responsibility and strength towards somebody else. When you win a championship, it's almost like that. Like you represent something other than yourself. Something beyond yourself that's expected, that's demanded, that's mandated. That you act like a freaking champion. And champions don't give in. Champions don't relent. Champions don't make deals. Champions find a way. That's where it starts. Forget about what a great jiu-jitsu guy he is. He is. He's a master. He's a Brazilian jiu-jitsu master, Oliveira. But he was very similar to someone I mentioned earlier in the show, Buster Douglas. Buster Douglas, before he fought Mike Tyson, was a hell of a good fighter. But he but he submitted sometimes, whether it was to Tony Tucker, whatever. But he so you go Google, guys. You guys know how to do that. I heard about Google a couple months ago, and you know, and I still haven't done it because nobody did it for me. But I, I know it's out there. I get my kids to do it. Google this for me. All right, Dad. Google that for you. No problem. And Buster Douglas was good enough to fight champions because he fought like a champion, but he didn't behave like one until the night he fought Tyson. Something happened. His mother died before the fight, and something happened. He finally realized that nothing could hurt him. He loved his mother. I know you're supposed to. Some people do more than others. I don't know. I'm sorry about that. He loved his mother. And he realized nothing could hurt him as much as his mother dying, including Mike Tyson. He finally had a reason to be strong, not to be weak. Not to be just big. Not to be just a good guy with a good jab. Be somebody that was strong. Somebody that could make his mother proud. That strength went into Tokyo with him. Flew all the way across transatlantic to Tokyo in the ring against 35 to 1, whatever the hell he was, Mike Tyson. It was a big he was a big favorite. <laughs> Some people think it was the greatest upsets in sports of all time. Right up there with the with the hockey team, the United States against Russia in in Lake Placid in the Olympics. Right up there. Right up there. And um it wasn't because of his skills that night. He always had those skills. It's because of his will. It was because of who he decided to be that night a champion for his mother that's what it was about with Oliveira Oliveira got 30% better since winning the title he, he, he wasn't any better the other night he was tremendous he was stronger he wasn't going to be a co-conspirator to his demise he wasn't going to cooperate in his demise he wasn't going to relent he wasn't going to submit not even an inch because in life we submit inches, milliseconds, milli, mi, just millimeters. We submit. We do. We do. We do. We do. The ones that submit the less, they accomplish the most. They learn to do that. He didn't submit at all. He refused to. 
So the first round, the geography had to be for Dustin Poirier had to be to stand, to strike, to control the standing, that area. And he did. He got the geography he needed, he wanted. His coaches wanted. That made sense. They're smart. They understand. They're prepared. And Oliveira didn't. But what happened? Dustin Poirier is one of the best, if not the best, finishers in MMA. He hurts a guy standing. He finishes them. Oliveira survived. He survived. Well, Oliveira went into the lion's den, went in there with a brilliant striker, a great puncher, a great finisher. You know, he came out second best, but he came out. He came out. And the thing that got tested there, that got shown there, that got kind of uh, spotlighted there for me was what he had become now as a champion, that person. Forget about the skills. He got beat in the first round as a striker. But what came out is the difference of him now. He's, just, he's a champion. He's a champion. And he behaved like a champion. He did. And he came out of that almost, I'm not saying winning, but he came out of that like, I can go into your place, Mr. Poirier, where you're great. You are. I can, I can go in there and I came in second best, but I can go in there. I can go in there if I want. That's important to know. And now I'm going to bring you into my area where I'm the man. And I'm going to see if you can come out of it. And of course we know Dustin is a tremendous grappler, wrestler. We know that he's done the guillotine on people so he can handle himself. Obviously. That's I mean that's why he's one of the best UFC fighters in the business. But we get past that first round. Why did he survive that first round? That should be the first question. He hurt Oliveira the way he hurts other guys and he finishes them. Why did he not finish Oliveira? Part of what I just said, because Oliveira now had that intangible, that X factor. Yeah, yeah, the X factor, yes. He knew how to behave like a champion. And little things, little things happen. He knew how to survive too, to behave like a champion. And he was a little more rounded little more rounded and dimensional with the things that he the weapons that he had if you will to to use Dustin's got great weapons he's he's a great puncher great finisher great striker great grappler wrestler whatever was the better terms to put it but Oliveira throws a little something else into the mix he's got some other things some other weapons to worry about you know he can strike with you but he also controlled the knees he controlled leaping knees jumping knees whatever the hell you want to call them uh he, he can throw other dimensions at you and he used those other dimensions to survive when he got hurt with the left hand he hit he used his knees not his fist he used that other dimension that he had available to him he used his knees to hold dustin off to hurt Dustin a little bit to the body, quite frankly, but to slow him down, to stop him from finishing him, to stop Dustin from doing what he does so freaking good. Get rid of people. He used his knees to do that, and it worked. And I'll tell you one other thing. It saved, it got him through the round, but he did one other thing, which was very interesting. Dustin catches him a right hook and drops him. Not a left hand, a right hook. And he drops him. Usually when Dustin hurts you, he gets rid of you. I said that already. You've seen it already. Something that was unfortunate for Dustin. We didn't know it at the time. We thought it was fortunate. We, If you're a fan of Dustin's, we thought it was a positive. It was a negative. That he dropped him. Because most people say, oh, that's a positive. He dropped him. Now he's finished him. With this guy, it was a negative. Because he dropped a great jujitsu 
expert, not a good jiu-jitsu expert, a great one, a great Brazilian jiu-jitsu expert. He dropped him. And to finish him, he had to go into his domain and doesn't realize that there was danger in going in that domain. And he couldn't go in there the way he normally would to finish the job because he understood that danger. He understood that. Now, if he had not dropped him, most people say, oh, it would have been better if he dropped him. No, no, no. If he didn't drop him, if he only staggered him and Oliveira stayed on his feet, would have been better for Dustin because then he wouldn't have had to worry about that domain and he would have done what he's done so many times. He would have went after him. I'm not saying he would have finished him, but he would have had a better chance of finishing him if he had stayed staggered on his feet. He would have. So those are the things going on here. Those are the variables that, that most people don't see. That That's going. And there's one other thing. I'm not giving any excuses to Dustin. He don't need me for that. He's a man. He's behaved like a man his whole freaking life. And he's he should be as proud as anybody could ever be proud. And his kids should. Everyone should that knows him. You know why? He did it the hard way. He did it the right way. He did it. He earned it. Every inch of his career he freaking earned Every inch. He was not one of these guys that were handed anything on a silver platter. You know, he wasn't one of these guys that comes out of the Olympics. And, and they're great. Don't get me wrong. They're great. But they come out of the Olympics in my sport. And, you know, instead of making uh, $800 for their first pro fight, they're making uh, 80000 because they're Olympic medalists. And they're with a promoter. And, and they're given the benefit of everything. They're given all the easy fights, all the right fights all the all the way up until they get to the title it's everything is just set up for them it's cleared for them the road is paved for them yeah and then give them credit they do it they have to do it at some point but it's an easier road it's an easier road but not for dustin not for dustin he had to do it the marvin Hagler way that's one of the reasons why i love marvin Hagler. god bless him you know he had to do it the hard way he had to do it. He had to fight everybody. Not for purses. Not for big purses. And he and then if he lost, he had to do it all over again. And he had to beat guys where he was the underdog, beat guys where he was coming off tough fights. He had to he had to do it he had to do it the way the old fashioned way. And he did. And it's what formed him to be what he is. And that's why he'll come back. Because of that. But this Oliveira, I'm giving him credit because he deserves it in this way. And I'm also talking, and again, I said I started this, this part where I said I'm not making excuses for Dustin. He doesn't need that. But there was something a little off. And I'll tell you why. Because he even knew it. He would never say it. But there's a way of a fighter talking without verbalizing things. I always said it to the audience when I was calling the fights, at Friday Night Fights for ESPN and later on with PPC. I would always say, it. he's saying something if you're understanding sign language. Boxing sign language. <laughs> he's saying something. But you have to understand that language. Dustin was switching from Southpaw to Orthodox. I hadn't seen him do it that much. And I watched it. I was saying, wait a minute. Why is he switching like this? You, you know, he's already heard him as a southpaw. Why is he switching? Uh, there's, there's something wrong. Uh, maybe that's too strong a word. But something that he, he himself has a little doubt about. Just, just a, something. Something. You're never going to know it, probably. But something. But he's an honest guy, so you never know. Talk, or there's no need to talk about it. But there's a need for me because this is what I'm supposed to do and see if I can help people understand something in this business, in my business, that makes these guys great, that changes the outcome of a fight. So sometimes things that are so slight, so subtle, so tiny that most people wouldn't even notice. There was something that gave him cause to think, to, to rethink himself, where he wouldn't rethink himself. Something that Oliveira did or made him feel. Something to make him switch back and forth a little bit more than I think he would or has or normally would. Right. So credit to Dustin Poirier 
for everything he's done and will continue to do in his career, starting with behaving like a good, decent man, like a champion, and continued great success for Oliveira, who who has been in this business like Dustin for a long time. He's fought everybody. He's felt the ups and downs. He's felt them all. He's he's witnessed them all. He's 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 you know he has uh, felt them all. He and and he's he found himself on top now. And when you get a guy like that who's been down and finds himself and gets himself and crawls up to the top and finally gets that magic, that ability, that thirty percent magic to know what it feels to behave like a champion. That's a guy that he can he can just continue to get better because he he always was good in all the other areas, but the mental area, the most important area in in my business, in this business, he he can continue to improve, continue to grow with. It's it's like Cush used to say to me, you know, Teddy, and I think this is kind of Oliveira. After you work so hard, you've toiled. Just like Dustin, you've toiled so long, so hard to get there. We used to say to the fighters, and Cus would always say, Teddy, it's hard to get there, but it's harder to keep it. And when you finally get there, which is never a guarantee, but after all that hard work, and after all the pains, the blood, the sweat, the tears, and there's plenty of all of that, the disappointments, the defeats, after all of that, when you finally get there, do everything in your freaking power to stay there. 